Dungeons and Dragons. And Junk Drawer. Hey guys. Hi. Hey, how you doing? You will uh, notice <laughs> that Stop. one Josh Delgado is not at the table. We are doing our epilogue, and Absidy Longshire decided to uh, ride off into the sunset solo dolo. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I really don't want to do a summary of the last episode. Like, if you are watching this episode, there's no fucking reason for you to do that if you didn't watch the last episode. That's fair. So... All three of you. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos. Yeah. It'll probably be me. <laughs> I'll rewatch Half it. of those views will be me. So... I want to cry again. I want to cry again. No. DM, whenever you're ready. So, uh, the last thing that was said was Ratia. As Rufio, you open the door and this bright, blinding light envelops you as the other three of you pass through and um, your eyes kind of wake up. And you are amongst the three logs of your sitting of where you all met. And to the to the side is Absidy's donkey grazing on some grass. It looks like its its hair is very long and its hooves are very long, but it looks like it stayed there. And slowly but surely, you all kind of uh, soar, get up. The two sons of Valoria are in the air, in the sky. You haven't seen this. There are two sons, just kind of pictured there. And Dirt kind of looks at the the three of you, and he goes, "I think we're home." Seems that way. Not quite my home, but it's better than Barovia. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty low bar. Can a bar be low if it's already on the ground? You could bury it. I'm not saying it in a bad way. You I mean, I'm just it's saying. something unknown to me. It's new. Uh, I'm up. I'm up for I'll you. I'll take. I'll like unhitch Absidy's mm -hmm. donkey. Mm -hmm. Bring it with us okay. where, wherever. Uh, I assume I know where I am. You kind of have a general idea of... It's been a year and a half of where you've kind of been. And as you guys are starting to convey and walk, the sun slowly starts to go out. As you suns. hear the suns slowly go out as this dark shadow just kind of envelops all of you and it just stretches so far. And you hear... <laughs> and shark and... Thok and Rufio, as you look up, you just see the, this ever-long belly of a dragon as it circles, circles, and it, a hundred feet away, 120 feet away, it slams down. Its face is, um, seems to be a swirl of blues and blacks, as with a black dragon, its horns are down here, but it has the frills of the blue dragon. As it looks, it starts to stalk. Rufio runs right up to it. And Dirt's like, oh, what What are you doing? And as you see Rufio run up to it, you put your hand up and the dragon's head kind of puts what its I head to you. I just grab her head and I squeeze her and tell her about, um, in Draconic, I'm just talking about how much I missed her. And she goes, calm down, calm down, uncle. What the fuck? And... She's gonna go, he's looking, he was looking for you, couldn't find you anywhere. How long have I been gone? I've been gone for about a year and a half. That seems about right. And I'll turn around and look at them. Faces, how do they... How are you reacting to Rufio petting and hugging a blue and black dragon? I cast speak with animals. <laughs> I'm confused as fuck. And I'm just yelling at the dragon, What? We mean no harm! <laughs> I speak common. As okay! This, as this female voice kind of escapes. He's a little slow, Saloon. To be fair, it's not a regular occurrence. Be nice. Um, I'm just letting you know. You can be mean, too. And <laughs> she kind of moves past you, and she goes, I'm Saloon. I know this is different, I'm assuming, for uh, you as a sight. Um, I promise I won't bite you. Hard. And that's provoked. Hard. We like to play. So, in that case, I put my axe back. Wise decision. 
And, um... Yo, Saloon will fuck you up. <laughs> so, how do... You know each other? Where is he? He's... Looking for you. Grab on. And I grab on. So, there's kind of like space. <laughs> Are you coming with us? Sure. Are we taking that? And she gestures at the donkey. <laughs> Preferably. It's for a friend. Just hold on to each other tight, please. And you see her scoop up this braying donkey that this poor thing's been like a year and a half <laughs> fending for itself. There's going to be a side comic of just the donkey's adventure. <laughs> uh, as it scoops up and holds tightly. Saloon holds the donkey tightly to its chest. She looks back. Okay, hold on to something. Hold on to Saloon. You, you hold on to the, the spikes on her back as you... You take off and you start flying over to the the cool, crystal cool waters of the oceans. And it takes a few hours, but slowly and surely, you see this hillside. It's desolate, except for a very tiny little, little hut that has a little chimney stack coming out. And you kind of circle, and very softly, Saloon uh, lands. She puts the braying donkey that's been freaking out for three hours. <laughs> puts it down slowly. And it just... She sits down. She she kneels down so all of you can get off. And you see this very tiny kind of hut. It's very humble. And you see this smokestack. I walk in. Uh, Saloon's like, you're not gonna... Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Saloon. <laughs> you're welcome, Shot. And I kind of look over to Thok, and I'm just like, didn't he say the house was going to have enough room for all of us? Did he? I was, I'm just and Dirk's like, overwhelmed that there was a dragon. <laughs> Dirk goes, yeah. Yeah, he did. I call Top Bunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, not fighting with you for it. You're so much bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> so as you open the door, you see sitting at an armchair over this, uh, Massive kind of crystal scrying orb. You see a very, an older dwarf. He has um, both of his heads shaved uh, skin tight. He has a very long, relaxed mohawk. Uh, pieces, flicks of gray in his beard and in his, uh, his hair. He's in these kind of uh, cleric vestiges. And he has these very tiny little glasses. And he's kind of looking and you see him knitting. And he looks up from his crystal and he stops. I'm looking for you. Uh, I was on a different plane of existence. It's not my fault. You have to start knocking. And you see as Decori flint back, gets up, and he slowly comes over. And you kneel down and he grabs you by the scruff and he puts your head to his, uh, your forehead to his shoulder and goes, I missed you, boy. I missed you too, Duke. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll like, squeeze him and try and pick him up, and I know he's not going anywhere, but I'm gonna try. Yeah, he doesn't let you. <laughs> and he kind of pats. <sighs> We've been looking for it. Months. Months in the... all over Valoria. Everywhere. We've been trying to find you. I have a lot to catch you up on. So you brought some friends? Uh, yeah. Come outside. And uh, I'll, I'll, like, grab him by the hand, like an excited little right, kid, right. and, run him, and run him out. And you kind of see this very old dwarf kind of come out, and he's wearing these cleric robes of white. And, uh, Thok, um, no, you don't have, uh, like a paladin kind of thing. Hold on. Sorry. He just kind of comes up, and he looks confused, and he goes, hello. Uh, Uncle Duke, this is Shart. This is Thok. Hi. And that is... You know, Fear. And Fear goes, Hello, Mr. Fimpak. And he goes, I told you it's Duke. Hello, all. You like all my arm? Sorry. <laughs> it's bruising. And I'm just over there shadow boxing with Saloon. <laughs> and you've never seen Rufio like this. He looks excited. I just go over to Duke. I was like, Is this what he was like? All the time. He was more annoying, but yeah. 
Oh, Jesus. He was a depressing piece of crap for the last year and a half, it feels like. Well, how about this? I put on some tea and you tell me all about it. We Sounds good. It. Yeah. And he kind of gestures the half orcs in and he goes, I knew a half orc once. Uh, and Dirk kind of goes in with you and you kind of like meander and you're just, you look back at the pasture and you just, you're happy to be home. And I, I whisper to Saloon mm-hmm. and Draconic. I like lean over and I'm like, you can take us back home, right? And she goes, you know, I can, and you know, he can too. I know, I just don't want to disservice anyone. You've disservice us for a year and a half. It's okay. Shut up. What's and I'll just like thing? go pop. And she <laughs> and I'll run smacks you with the tail. <laughs> you trip. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Eight points of bludgeoning <laughs> damage. You hit your head and on then the rock. Run <laughs> <laughs> so you guys kind of go up and very, uh, on this coat rack, you kind of all put your armor, your skins up. And on the last hook, you see this great war hammer that's kind of had this leather strap that's hung up on the the coat rack like it's it hasn't been used in a very long time and you see on it this uh hand with this eye this blue eye over it if you want to make a religion check thok you can if you would like to i don't know (laughs) things have changed so natural 20. (laughs) you see this as the mark of helm mark of i know exactly who helm the god of helm he's the watcher right he is the other watcher I got an 11, so I don't know. So you're like, the fuck's the eye on a gauntlet fur? Just sitting there like... <laughs> you're like, this some bullshit. <laughs> so you guys kind of sit down, and there are these little, like, stools, and, like, Rufy, you're kind of on the ground, you're like... <laughs> <laughs> on the rug in front of Duke's feet, and you retell him the story, this tale of how you all kind of come together. You talk about your fallen comrades of Absidy, and you weave this great tale. And Oh, we have a donkey for you, too. It's, I don't know if I want a donkey. What well, am I going to do with the donkey? Keep donkey! It, keep, <laughs> keep it alive for a friend until he comes back. For your friend, Absidy. Yeah. I can do that. Can you do anything about my face? Boy, oh lord. I want to Someone's already face. done something about your face. Can you make it not this? Or at least help me try? <sighs> You're so strong. I if you are. You've been touched by an actual god. Yeah. Nothing I can do to fix that. We'll work on it. <laughs> and I kind of just look at him. Would I notice the supplies around? Uh, go ahead and roll a uh, perception. Okay. And when I say supplies, I mean the knitting. Yeah. Damn it. Eight. You see that it's, you know... It's not very high. You see it's different colored yarns. He has just baskets and baskets full of different... You need to not roll a one. (laughs) Any color you can think of is just all here amongst this, like, this is where he sits and thinks and he knits. And you see this, different things that he's made of sweaters and scarves. So I just kind of want to go to Rufio and I'll be like, is this the guy that made your sweater? Yeah. Oh! I'm going to get one soon, I think. Is it almost my birthday? I don't know. It's been a year and a half I already have one. Oh, sick. I'm going to get a new one right now. And he starts taking his armor off. <laughs> oh, <Jesus> God. Christ. <laughs> and you peel off your armor and you're like, ha <laughs> uh, You go over and you kind of have like a little guest room where you used to stay. And you have like your posters and your kind of drawings you did when you were like 12 and 13 when you were Dirt's age. And on it is uh, a red um, sweater that has a golden R on it. I'll throw it on. It's a little tight. Yeah. You've gotten a little bit bigger. I'm a, yeah. But looking, it's still, yeah. It's I'm, like skin tight. I love it. And I, I go out and I'm like, does it fit? And you kind of, and the pit slit, slit. And you're like. Looks good on you. Yeah, I'm going to have to cast mending on that one. <laughs> no, I just was curious. I mean, he has talked about you. So. Yeah, Vladdy. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Green. Start working on something. And you see him and he kind of puts his needles down. He picks another one. He starts doing green. He's like, he kind of measures you up. All right. It's going to give me a little time, but you send the sending address and I'll, I'll mail one out to you. We're, we're going home. I figured a lot. Green on green. Obviously (laughs) a different color green. I know what I like. Hey. Hey. So what? 
what's been going on here. And his visage kind of goes grim. <sighs> Not great stuff, lad. The Raven Queen, as I can see by your armor, not thrilled. Um, she's not doing so hot. We've un been unable to locate her. Helm has not been able to communicate to me anything, and he is the Watcher. She is in deep in hiding. We, uh, we had someone who was working on it and another group of adventurers, but they've kind of lost contact. We don't know what's on the throne currently. But we know it's not good. We can go with you and take it out. <laughs> it's not that simple. No, that is. And boy, oh. You told me some great, pretty great feats. This is something a lot nastier than a vampire. Will you train us up? It seems like, uh, we kind of all got your paths to go by. I'm already getting a big ping off of you. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> I would say it's a good thing. Okay. And you, you, you kind of have a gleam in your eye. What do you think that gleam means? You know what it means, I have no idea. There's something that I'm interested in checking out. And that one, and he gestures over to Grayer, who's just at this point, he's just passed out on the fucking... He's got a lot of things coming for him. Coming for him? <sighs> There's only been one other thing. Like him. What? What is him? Something a lot, lot, a lot more complicated. Out of my pay grade. We'll protect him. He's got his own path to go by. But you'll protect him as long as you can. So, tonight, we dine. Yes. <laughs> and as you all kind of convey this very humble wooden table, you eat this soup and... You all just sit in this comfortable silence, and anything you guys are going to be doing for the rest of the night before nope. you move on to the morning. I want to pull the red egg out and put it on the table. <laughs> Lick it. What is it? Uh, I have no idea what that is. Uncle Duke, if you can't tell me what this is, I don't know how I'm going to find out. If you're willing to give it to me, I can see if I can work on it to figure out what's going on with that. Sure, here you go. And I'll <laughs> toss it over to him. Alright. Alright. Careful, you don't want to crack an egg. It's pretty sturdy, trust me. And you'd see him and he kind of places it down to the side. I like say Loon would be too kind to a sibling, if that's the case. She better be, and I'll like look, I'll shoot like my eyes out the door, look at her. And you see her like... So, right on to from this. Uh, I'm going home. Uh, they're going to use it as a base. And, uh, I mean, they're willing to come and go and more than welcome to come and go as they please. Is there anything in particular that you're looking to go? <sighs> While we were away... We had an opportunity to get out for a short period of time. Okay. It was a minute. Apparently, it was a very short period of time. It felt like a couple days, but in reality of where we were, not. I went to... I went to Locke. You went to Locke? Yeah. What was left of Locke? Was left to block. There was a big explosion. There was a goblin horde. That's what we fought. While we were there. Hmm. They're still in a rebuilding process, but is that where you're looking to go at? One of the leaders of one of the uh, the groups there. His name was Fennec. Hey. 
I kind of... I almost felt like I had a purpose. And that's not something that I've ever really felt before. I can... Don't don't forget, Shark, that was also a little bit ahead of where we currently find ourselves. I can get him anywhere he wants to go, lad. It's a five-year jump. Where was it? What was a five-year jump? Going to lock was five years ahead of where we... Wasn't it five years? Mm -mm. Oh. No, he was saying that the next campaign was probably going to be five uh, to ten no, years. Maybe jump. that's what Correct. it was. Yeah. <clears throat> how, how are you able to get us to where we need to go? Like, <laughs> Uncle Duke's of... pretty fucking strong. He boosts me up. Um, you are not from here. I don't know you. No. Um, fuck. Tell me though, Doc. Do you, in your realm, have you heard of avatars? Of gods? We we have gods, yes. You have gods, but do you have people chosen by gods? Not I'm not talking like simple clerics, like you and I or a paladin. I'm talking about a piece of that god on the plane. No. And he kind of gestures, and you see him point to the, the hammer. I was chosen by Helm to be his forever watching eye. Here on Earth, or in the realm? In this material plane, yes. I am an avatar of Helm. Kind of awesome. Bestowed upon me, I, I have his divine favor. Alright. Some heavy shit. <laughs> must be a burden, but uh, you have no idea. Must come with its perks. Are you trying to take my friends away from me? No. What? I'm trying to get them to where they want to go. I'll come at you. You're gonna try, lad. <laughs> Not for very long. <laughs> I. I haven't been asked where I want to go in a very long time, and I think now I'm just gonna enjoy living life. In general. So, without having a particular path, if you'll have me, I'll go wherever Rufia goes. You are more than welcome. You know how much I eat, so just keep that in mind. Hey. And that's like, it's a lot. It's a lot. You I'm, don't, a, I'm a grown boy. You don't know how... I'm a grown-ass man. <laughs> so big my house is. So Duke says, all right, well, in the morning, I, uh, you guys aren't too far off if you ride sailing. If you don't mind, you and I, we can take a walk. Yeah. Sounds... Sounds sounds good. All right, then. So, I'll clean this up. You see him kind of take the bowls as he leaves the four of you at the table. So, you're going now, too? I've never really felt... Like I belonged somewhere, aside from with my pack. I definitely feel like I belong with you. But without Absidy here, it doesn't feel right. I feel like I belong with all of you, not just some of you. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be around. I mean, you guys... I mean, you see how I walk. <laughs> I, can, I can get around. I'll come back. I want to try something I've never done before. What's up? want to try... Try to fight for something bigger than just me. Well, when you get where you're going... Let us know where that is, and we'll keep in contact, and if you ever need anything, I'll be here. I know. And then, do we still have the, the stones? You do. And I just gesture. Testing. You better be pretty goddamn close if you're going to use that stone. <laughs> so mild. <laughs> I'll make sure I check it on you every once in a while. Oh, yeah, well, I mean... I mean, I could check in on you guys, too. Like, Yeah, with I'm all sure your special superpowers, yeah. I'm sure there's a mailing system. There is. There's a post office. 
Yeah, we have. If thought, you can write, it's fine. Can you, I don't know if you can read. He's not great at it. Read? I read the Tome of Straw. He can read. read. That's okay. Right. Just yeah. goes I, slow. Okay. I'm just. And, I'm worried. I'm confused. You. you guys forgot about what I did too. I only cast Scrying once. It's You're gonna so... spy on us? No, I'm not spy on you, but... You're gonna let me know? Like, I don't want to be in the shower or something, like... <laughs> I'm just saying, if I ever hear that anything... Get any news that things go sour. You know that you guys... Closest thing I have anymore to a family. You're the first people I'll check up on. That's all it is. I'll keep you posted over a few weeks, so... <laughs> Sounds good. That way you won't have to... Use that unless you absolutely have to. Hey, we never know. Didn't know that we'd be on a completely other plane fighting a vampire who's crazy with power, but hey, fuck, here we are. So. Stranger things have happened. I don't know Have they? they have. Nope. <laughs> nope. And you know that. <laughs> I'd, uh, God, I'd say it into my brain. If you were to tell me 48 hours ago that I'd be, I mean, back to normal, I'd be like, okay. Well, but here you are. Well, uh, what's, like, the people of Valoria? Is he gonna stick out real bad? Not really. Not, they're, not they're all different. I go, though. They're all different races of, you know, you have tiefling. It's a little easier to blend here. A little bit. It's a little more common. Yeah. Don't worry, you'll be a little... You're less of a pariah. Yeah, well, when we I'm went to... three quarters orc, but... I mean... I mean, when we went to Locke, I literally fought side by side with another half orc. Nice. So we weren't exterminated here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> One thing you'll notice that Fock, you don't know how old Fock is. Mm -mm. How is old? How old is Fock? Fock is in his late twenties, even though he looked like he was in his mid forties because of the. Uh, Way he came, the so you look a lot younger now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like I'm like 27, 26, 27. So you're about the same age as Rufio. You shave, sharp, you shave yeah, your face sure. a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I haven't in a while. Like something different. <laughs> Never mind. I don't like it. Not I feel around. around it, all it of my shitty. all of my scars are gone. Yeah. I'm like. I kind of lift up my shirt. I look at my back. Tattoos. No tattoos. Got that new new. You look shitty. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> new body. Who dis? <laughs> um. So, anything you guys are doing for the rest of the night? Um, I think just sitting around enjoying each other's company. Feeling as my old self, I would start. We're on an island, aren't we? Are we in like a little? You're on the side of the hill. On a so hill. It's in a desolate area, so you're, okay. you have privacy. Oh, um, where's the closest body of water? <laughs> Fairly far, but it's it's about you know a few hours journey. You can walk. I'll go up to Saloon, and I will ask her politely. Mm. Can you please take us to the closest body of? Water in Draconic. I don't want them to know where we're going. Okay. Are you gonna pack bed rolls? Yeah. I'll make sure everything's packed and we're ready. All right. I'll tell Dad. And uh, soon, surely, slowly but surely, you know, you kind of. I pack up. everything up. Uh, guys, pack a an overnight bag. We're not staying here. Oh. And Duke goes. Oh, we're not. Nope. I just lost you. Uh, you can just got you back. You can come. You can come. You can be there with us. Bring the hammer. It looks like it hasn't gotten any use since I've been gone. It's been a while since I've used it. You see him and he picks up this massive warhammer and it looks light as a fucking feather for him. Puts it on his shoulder. And where are we going? Uh, Saloon, we ready? And she kind of nods. Alright, let's go! And everybody kind of, as the sun is setting and the suns are setting, the reds and purples of the sky, you take off. And you see crystal clear this body of ocean. And this little clear landing that looks like it's had some kind of like overgrown weeds to it. But it looks like it was a place of reflection as Salem kind of circles and lands slowly. 
and you see the waves crashing against the sea, and you feel that salt. Like air. I sit on, I sit up from sailor, and I turn around and look at Doc. Oh, the moment that I feel the salt air, like I close my eyes and just take a deep, deep breath. And you feel that. That old. Mm -hmm. You feel that yearning for the sea. And we've already landed on the ground. Mm -hmm. You're on the ground. So you feel this. You hear the crunching of the sand beneath your boots. I take off my boots. Yeah. I'm like, and you feel, and it feels like powder. And without saying anything, I'm just like super excited. Yeah. And I start just taking my armor off. You see him. He starts just taking this armor off. I'm not familiar with this kind of area. No, I'm not. a forest person. Yeah. This is uh, the first time you've ever seen a beach. Ready, Shark? Run. And I'll point to the, the water. Mm -hmm. And you see... And you see dirt. He's starting to take off his his armor. <sighs> Salt water, but it's pleasant. Don't drink it. Don't drink don't, it. Don't don't drink the water. Don't it's the best it. kind. You won't die. Go. You, you're going to die. <laughs> you won't die. You're going to be so thirsty. <laughs> Please don't. don't. Salt water. And you all kind of... Go up to the water. The water is cool and it's welcoming. Oh, the sand I dive in is soft. Head first. You dive in head first and you feel the stickiness that only salt water can be when you come up and you gasp for air and you welcome back that stinging salt feeling in your eyes as some of it goes up your nose and you kind of cough and laugh as <coughs> <laughs> shorts like <laughs> oh, that's awesome and you take the time to be. As the day kind of winds down, as the night kind of falls, Duke's already started a fire and your bedrolls are there and he tells you stories of the time he fought Tiamat and brought down the five-headed dragon queen and um, all the things in his great journey and the stories of the hammer. And you all fall asleep to these, these tales, thinking of the tales of your own. I'll wait till they fall asleep and then I'm going to stay up and, and talk to Duke for a minute. Okay. You guys doing anything before you fall asleep? I was gonna, all, all I would do is be like, put a dragon in a headlock once. That's awesome. I've never seen that. They can vouch for me. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> uh, before going to bed, of course, I look at Rufio, say thank you. And I don't even care if he doesn't like him or not. I run in, give him a giant bear hug. Mm -hmm. And you feel Fox embrace. Hold him, like, pat him on the shoulder, smile, and make my way to bed. Yep. And you just, it's a straight, it's nothing. You just kind of lay down in the, the sand and you kind of. Yeah, grab. no bedroll. No bedroll, no pillow, no nothing. Fox is just, he's in his glory. So, something on your mind, buddy. It has been a time. <laughs> Sounded like it. I, uh, I missed you. Missed you too. We got, uh, we have a long journey ahead of us, don't we? You don't know the half of it. I've seen a lot of shit, Uncle Duke. I know. We... We have to find Elliot. I think I might be able to keep an eye out for that. I... And Rufio kind of starts to choke up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I killed him. But before I did, he told me Elliot was the one that took them there. And you see Duke, and he, his eyes kind of well up as well as he stares off into the fire. Should have smeared that ant when we had the chance. And I'm going to grab Duke's hand. Mm -hmm. Clutches for yours as well. Take it in mine. Don't worry, Uncle Duke. I'm gonna get him. We're gonna get him, Mahdi. And I'm gonna get up, and kiss his head, mm -hmm. and go lay down. Okay. 
And as you do, the night kind of comes and the day slowly starts to part. The sun coming across your faces, you open your eyes and in front of you the fire is out. Duke is sitting where he was last night and he's just kind of staring back at the flame and he looks up as all of you start to stir. So, looks like this is where we parked. Well, not us, but... And I'll go over to Shart, and I'll go for the Spartan handshake. I shake it away, and I give him a hug. Why are so many people hugging and I me? I pick him up. <laughs> uh, it's what family does. <laughs> Deal with it. Family. Take care of yourself. Don't yeah. forget to learn to write, and then write. I'll do my damnedest. And then, uh... You out? I go over to Thok. Same thing. Give him a big hug. Oh, mm -hmm. I... I pick him up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a new one for you. Yeah. It's been a while. Haven't, haven't experienced that. And Thok picks you up and... I take one of the... many tooth necklaces that I have. Mm -hmm. Take it. And hand it to him. Thank you. It's, it's been an honor. It has. It's not going to be the last time, though. No. We'll ride again. And then I want to go over to uh, Fever. Yeah. Hey, big guy. I said this to, uh, to Rufio, but I never said it to you. You're a real good kid. You mean a lot more to me than you realize. Can you see him? tears kind of ball up and he kind of puts his head to you, to your chest and he goes you're a good man and a better wolf <laughs> puts pants. And as you kind of yep alright and he kind of goes back and you all three kind of get on Saloon and <sighs> Duke's gonna I'll meet you back at the house my house? No, my house. Yes, your house. Okay, I was uh. just making sure. God. Don't forget my egg. <laughs> Goes over. You ready, boy? God, man, he is really a little bit of a prick here. <laughs> I feel like he was a prick back there. Uh, he was just a depressed prick. Now he's a happy prick. Ugh. A prick is a prick. <laughs> prick is a prick. All right. And he kind of puts his hand on the back of Shart's shoulder. Or back. Mid-back. What? What, what? what is slick? I can't hear you guys. <laughs> that you're gonna blink and then we're we'll follow shart so shart we kind of get to the edge of where that mountain top is and you see the rebuildings of flock and duke you kind of sits next to you and he goes it's gonna be a lot but you're gonna have to go through some trials if you're gonna join the jaegers I was made aware of that. And... You know what I've been through so far. I think I'm up for it. Do kind of patch you. And then we'll get to you if you want to join Josh for a little bit. Thank you. Okay. So it's you, Thok, and Dirt. You kind of go on to uh, Salen's back and she goes... And onward. So, <laughs> bitch. so it takes a few hours as you fly over the landscape of the the cloud steps and you eventually get to the town of Valoria, the city of the entire city of continent of Valoria. See the iron capital and you kind of circle and slowly but surely you see this very tiny, tiny little town in Valoria and you see amongst this hill your home. And Saloon kind of choo -choo, drops in front. And uh, she kind of lets you guys off. And it's you talking dirt. And she goes, all right, I'm going to go back to see Dad. I'll see you guys later. Thank Bye, Saloon. And you see. And as she turns around, she smacks you with her tail. You're like, oh, bitch. <laughs> Takes off. <laughs> Throw a rock. And Dirt kind of looks at uh, the two of you. And he's like. 
I know. You're welcome here anytime. But go let him know you're back. I will. Um, I'm going to take a, a little bit of time before I reach out. Yeah? I miss my mom. Take your time, buddy. And then uh, uh, Rufio will put a hand on his shoulder. Rufio hasn't been in armor at all since they got to Dukes. Yeah. And he'll put a hand on, on Dirt's shoulder. And yeah, just... he doesn't have his armor. It's kind of strapped to his back. And... Fear, you've come... So far. I'm so fucking proud of you. And you see him smile, and he goes, I'm proud of you, too. <sighs> and, uh... I, like, push him, just give him a little shove. Shoves you back. And I'll, I'll, I'll make my way into the house yeah. and give him his lock him. a minute. Kind of lock, huh? I mean, it feels like I've known you for a really long time. Is that yeah. silly? Is that weird? No. <laughs> Not at all. And now I feel like we're closer than before. And he kind of puts to... He has the still has the necklace on. You keep that. Oh, that reminds me. And you see him undoing in his backpack, and he takes out the Mongo, Mongo's uh, dagger. And he tosses it to you, Rufio, as you catch it. Told you I'd bring it back. I'm gonna need it. So unless you're cutting a very big wedge of cake. <laughs> and he smiles, and he goes... <sighs> Ice man out. <laughs> and he kind of puts if, his. Sure, before you go. Yeah. You. You're hmm. a light of the sun now, Lathander. There's two suns in the sky. Huh. Think of me every time you see the second one. One for you, one for me. That's right. Family. Family. He smiles. And then you kind of see him walk off. So the two of you go to um. Manor pain, thick dust through the year that it's been, kind of that musty smell. Duke's kind of tried to keep it keep it up as much as he could, but your you place see. smells. <laughs> uh, when when I was in Valoria, I, I mm -hmm. typically spent time at Duke's. I didn't really like to stay here. I can see why. And uh. I'll look at Thok, and I'll be like, ah, I just need a minute. And I'll walk up and go into the study that I've seen so many times. Anytime I've talked to Hor. Mm -hmm. And I'll just kind of stand in the doorway for a minute. Okay. As you look at it, do you open the door? Do you go inside? After taking a minute, yeah, I'll walk in. You do, and it's pristine. As you go in, you hear very faintly the ringing of bells. And I just, I, I put my arm, or my hand on, on her sigil on my armor, or where it would be. Yeah. And uh, I let her know, we're preparing, keep holding on. And you hear the, the fading subside, as you said. The rest of the evening is very quiet as the two of you kind of reconvene. You go to the tavern. Drinks. Yes, Doc. At some point, yeah. this could be even in the tavern. Sure. Just with drink. Um, I... I need to apologize to you. For what? Um, when I first met you. Did I pay the first round? Is that what it... No, 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 no. Um, when I, when I first met you, I didn't know y'all, uh, and I was a soldier, and I felt like following orders was all I was good for, and obviously I got to know you, you guys are my family, I see you as a brother that I haven't had in a long time. One of the things that happened, and one of the reasons, and I explained the story of what happened with mm -hmm. me taking the holy symbol, putting it underground how I became myself again. Yeah. Um, Anubis in this place or in Ra Ravenloft? In uh, Barovia. Barovia. 
This is much different than the Anubis I know. I was brought back with a plan, with a duty, with a purpose. This Anubis, he apparently <laughs> is your deity's ex. <laughs> They have been together before, and she took the throne from him many, many centuries ago. And I would know this as a follower of hers, right? That you would know that death was a Deathless. prior entity mm -hmm. before her. There has been a few times where he has requested me to change your... Pers persuade you to follow him. And there was once or twice where I've tried. But your faith is strong, and I'm happy for it. And once I got to know you and trust, get to know you and love you guys, and I figured that th that's not what I want to do. I'm not here to win someone's throne. But just know that Anubis knows what's happening to the Raven Queen. And he's plotting to grab her throne. I don't know if this has anything to do with what your uncle we know right mm -hmm. or your uncle mm -hmm. has yes. told you we were there for that conversation mm -hmm. i don't know if this has anything to do with what your uncle told you about her throne and who's trying to take it and who's in power now but i want you to know that anubis is aware he wants the throne i don't know again if he's working alongside of who's currently on it and trying to overthrow her but just know that I'm obviously not in his good graces anymore. And Rufio will kind of sit for a minute, process everything. Well, you're here now. And that's all that matters. I don't care about what was, I care about what is. And I choose to be here. Pillar gave me a choice. Anubis didn't. Then choose to help me and let's put the Raven Queen back where she belongs and I'll I'm gonna bamf the scythe mm -hmm. is it fixed is the blade it's slightly cracked okay and I'll look at it I'm gonna grab it mm -hmm. I haven't done this in a long time and try to cast mending Okay. On it. As you cast mending, you see a very faint silver in like fill in the crack. Maybe that'll help. Only one way to find out, and I'll bamf it out. But not tonight. And call for another round. As you call for your rounds, and a few days pass, you kind of take the time for the two of you get acquainted. Um, there's a port. There are uh, merchants, markets. You kind of relay, recess, and tell Duke that you're ready to train. And Duke's going to be amongst you. and You're going to go with him, Thok? Yeah. Someone's got to watch his back. He kept going unconscious. I got to bring him back. That's true. It happened a lot. It's very true. Just <laughs> like your father. <laughs> and he's going to go. There's someone that I think you need to meet. I haven't spoken to about him often, but he's dealt with things like this in the past. Okay. So, pack your things, and you take your few moments. You kind of look at the rest of the, the house. You know how long you're going to be. If you want to say, you know, if you want to go back to the office and look. I'm going to go back to the office, and uh, I'm going to take out the Mongo dagger mm -hmm. and put it on the desk and like know that that's where it is and I'll look up and be like I'll know where it is when I need it and I'll walk out and close okay. the door behind me and as you do uh, make a wisdom save for me uh, natural 16 mm -hmm. uh, da -dum -dum -dum. oh my god uh, I'm so strong <laughs> 23. Level 23? 10. Yeah. As you leave, you smell your mother's perfume as the door closes behind you. And I kind of sit in it for a minute and walk, walk away. 
So, as we go, you you go with Duke, and he goes, Alright, it's going to be a little bit of a journey. I hope you guys don't mind snow. Snow? Snow. I'm not ready for <laughs> snow. I just, like, tuck the pelt. Yep. And you, he teleports you, and you're on the side oh. of this mountainside, and you're just being battered with snow. And he's like, I told you it was cold, I'm sorry. <laughs> and it takes... <laughs> it takes... <laughs> the climb is long and arduous. As the two of you scale up this massive mountain that the highest peak is just piercing through the clouds. And as you get closer and closer to the top, right at the highest peak after a few weeks... There's a stepway that goes all the way to the tippy top, and you see a shape at the very tall end. And Duke and talk, talk, talk. Uh, Duke looks at you and he goes, He's gonna be training you. Fuck. Figured you might wanna come with a cleric for a little bit and train. Yeah, I'm always willing to learn. Another cleric? I have you, Duke. Can't be everywhere at once, boyo. Why not? I'll keep in touch. Please. You, um, you know where I'm gonna be. I can't just walk off a mountain. Well, Ava's everywhere. And he's gonna put his hand on Doc. Doc, you wanna say anything to Rufio? Fuck you both. <laughs> and Rufio's just gonna walk off. <laughs> Don't do anything I would do. And Doc, uh, Duke is gonna teleport with you. And if you'd like to join Mike and Josh for a very brief moment. So, the step up to the, the climbing is, it doesn't take too long. It's me! It's me, Carlos! Is the door locked? Just open, just open it. Why is everyone so polite? Just go like, what up, bitches? Hey, hoes. I'm a man cheetah. Um... So as you go and you start climbing up the peak of the mountain, you see clad in this purple dragon hide armor, staff to his side, this top knot of white hair pulled back. You see sitting and meditating on this highest peak. I smelled you. You're with Duke. Yeah see this get up you see about 35 year old man he has purple eyes one of them is actually yellow he looks over and you must be Rufio yes and you are Jaden I'm gonna be helping you with this my clothes that inner conflict you got going on. I know a thing or two about that. If you could, I hope you don't mind werewolves. Mm. And you both kind of eye each other out, and you see this. I have a tent at the bottom of the peak. This peak. If you'd like to join me? Of course. So as you kind of talk to each other, you go over battle scars, you find out that he was, he fought with Duke during the Dragon Wars, mm -hmm. and that he became a werewolf, and how he trained, and that he secludes himself, because he's he himself had a fight with the inner demon of his lycanthropy. And as you close your eyes for the night, you once again hear those holes, and I need you to make a wisdom save. Uh, modded 20. Modded 20? So, as you go or you start to dream, your eyes wake up and you're at your father's study. And sitting in the chair is your father. No. And you hear the gongs very, very faintly in your, in your ears. You look good. I don't even know what. And he just kind of grabs you, and you feel your father hug you for the first time since you were six years old. 
And he goes, I'm so proud. He whispers, I'm so proud. You did great. She could only bring one of us back. It's a toss up. Mom says hi. Give her my love, please. I will. You spend your time, 15 minutes, talking. Anything you want to say before the 15 is up? Am I doing the right thing? Everything's a moral gray area, kid. But, you're on the right path. As long as you and Mom are proud, then I'm doing everything right. And he smiles. He goes, you are. Now, I need you to uh, finish up this training. Save the Raymond Queen. Maybe check in on Pally. I'll definitely check in on Pally. Okay. Puts his head to yours. And it kind of dissipates if you would like to go get stock for me. Yeah. If Josh wants to cut this, he can. Josh, if you want to cut it, you can. Can, 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 can. Oh, hey, Thok. Hi. Welcome back, bud. Thanks. So, <clears throat> Thok. Yes. As you lurch forward with Duke... You kind of meet this docks of these different ships. And Duke goes, Well, I figured we can do some training. But uh, I've never been on a ship before. No? I've never been sailing before. It's fun. I don't know if I get seasick. seasick. You get used to it. Oh, you lie. And uh, you kind of see this very modest vessel. Don't think we'll really need a crew for it. You can really focus on this. I'm just training. All right. I'm going to try to make you the best as I can. I'm ready. So the two of you go onto your, your vessel, your ship. You hoist the sails and you feel the rope burn of the sails as you set them. And Duke doing his best to try to like, you see him like, pfft, unicorn blast one of them down. Pulls it taut. So I don't know how long it's going to take. I figure we go east. Let's go east. Let's go east until we hit sand. Okay. Kind of puts his hand on, on your shoulder and the night soon comes after hours of sitting on this vessel. Duke leaves for the night and you sit on the bow of your ship. What do you name her? Oof. What's my name her? Good question. Well, I look out into the horizon mm -hmm. and just looking at the water, the sky, and just seeing just open ocean mm -hmm. is just so tranquil and what I've been longing for for so long. And just knowing that that line is just so peaceful mm -hmm. I look and I'm like I'm gonna name her Horizon yeah the Horizon and you move on into the Horizon onto your next adventure if you want to get shark for me More cuts, more cuts. Oh, hey, man. Come on over. You're like, uh, yeah. What's up, demons? It's me. Yo, boy. Yo boy. So, we'll go a little bit earlier. Duke bams you over to lock, and mm -hmm. as he leaves, you slowly but surely scale down the mountain. The uh, Bahir that you ran into earlier, with a knowing glance, nods down as you it goes back into the cavern. <laughs> Uh, what you haven't noticed over the course of your battle, because it hasn't, you haven't been in the natural sunlight, your skin it hasn't been tanning. 
as yeah. it used to. That deep green isn't there. And you see in the flex of the crinkles of your palm, you see flicks of red. Slowly but surely, you go in amongst the city, you go amongst the ruin. And at the very end is the outpost, the Jaeger outpost. And you see that dumb cleric who couldn't hit anything. And he goes, you're back? Yeah, I am. Right, we're going to have some work to do. He pushes open the door and you see at the end of the uh, this long kind of table is Fennec. And he looks up and you see different braids in his hair yeah. and his wraps. He says in Orca, short, you're back. Yeah, Fennec, I am. Brother with you. He didn't make it. Shame. I'm sorry. Thank you. Loss of a loved one is very hard to bear. He kind of gets up and you see him and something's different. About you. What happened over there? Well, a lot of the shit I could tell you, you probably wouldn't even believe. Uh, you can fucking try me. And as you sit, you go over your tails of straw and that red beast in the cage, and you see Fennec's eyes kind of peer deeper into you. And he goes, let me see your hands. And you show him your palms, and he sees the cracks. And you see him unwrap his monk tape. And you see his hands crawling up. His forearms are red. And he goes, this is okay. We can work with this. What does it mean? We embrace the rage, brother. I could say that. Uh, with that, I'm gonna need you to get me Absidy. Oh. Hi, everybody. Hey man, what's up my guy? Hello. Oh hey, I haven't seen you in like an hour. Has it been that long? It's been an hour. Wow, oh, wow. it just feels like yesterday. I know, I've been working on trying to figure out what my level 10 stuff is. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay. So Absidy, as you ride off to your boar, you hear in the distance the calls of your, your comrades as you go deeper and deeper into the forest. You set up camp, you're with XYZ. Days turn into weeks as the sun is still there and you wait for it. And slowly but surely you see the clouds darken. And as you keep moving, you see at the very far end of your robe, dressed in his black suit, his hair down, Lucifer waiting for you. And as you slowly get closer and closer on XYZ, have you finished soaking yet? And as he says that, mm -hmm. I I hop off, mm -hmm. XYZ dismiss him. Walk a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. Close enough to be not quite intimidating, but to show that I'm not... Intimidated by him. Yeah. Okay. And I look at him. Yes. Good. Now... We have some work to do, you and I. You see him snap, and right next to him is one, too. You have to be more careful with your things. Is he petting him? Yeah, he's petting him. Okay. So, shall we begin? What do you need? And for the first time, you see Lucifer smile. He smirks. If you'd like to get... Guys, do you want to come in? I'll so get him. the rest of them. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. 
That was so short. Everyone's was short. For Josh. Josh. Oh, but wait, there's more. There is no Josh. There's only But Josh. wait, there's more. If you uh, buy Steve's two bag. OxyCleans. <laughs> so. Natural one. <laughs> As you escape Barovia. Shard's dead. Strahd's death grants Barovia reprieve. The fog that surrounds it obviously has dissipated, and the Barovians take a sign of the sunlight as a passing of Strahd. The bats, the wolves, the direwolves of Barovia, Barovia all lose their supernatural link to Strahd upon this destruction and become ordinary beasts, destined to be hunted down or even driven to the farthest reaches of the Sfalich woods. Even after Strahd's death, Castle Ravenloft remains a haunted place shunned by all Barovians. Its dark immensity and threatening count countenance, continents are enough to deter locals from plundering or reoccupying it. Ismark. He becomes the burgomaster of the village of Barovia. He is grateful to all of you for what you have accomplished and what you've done. The Vistani, fearing that the Barovians might kill them for being spies and collaborators. The Vistani pack their wagons and leave the valley with great haste, and the Barovians are happy to see them go. Rudolf van Richten leaves Barovia to live out his remaining days in solitude, and his protege, Esmeralda d'Avenir, isn't convinced that Strahd is truly dead. She also knows that there are other evils in Barovia to be conquered, and so she stays her medal. Upon his death, Strahd's vampire spawn are freed from his control, and each seeks a new destiny. And, unfortunately, no one else has survived. Now, Esmeralda's suspicions prove justified. As Strahd's destruction is temporary, for his curse can't be so easily be ended. The ancient dark powers of Anubis, for which Strahd forged his pact, cause of the vampire to reform after a period of months. About six or seven. Long enough for the Barovians to discover what it feels like to live life of hope. When Strahd is reborn, the mist surrounds the land of Barovia once more, and the Barovian hope returns to horrible despair, and Strahd remembers the defeat dealt to him and begins plotting his revenge. After the mists reappear, Madame Eva and her Versani come back to the valley. The beasts of the land once more fall under Strahd's spell, and the Burgomasters fortify their settlements, hoping against all hopes that someone can save them from Strahd again. Thank you guys so very, very much for allowing me to take you on this journey. You, It's been a year and a half. It's been a lot of work on everyone's end. And I'm just, I am humble and grateful that you have all been so willing to say yes and walk with me on this. And so, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, and yeah, whatever. Um, also, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Let's do it again. Hell yeah. Okay, uh, Mike, you're up. <laughs> you find yourself in a tavern. <laughs> you find yourself amongst woods. <laughs> so. Roll. What? This is a final roll? Yeah. All right. Let me clear out my, my tray. So we'll each say our roll and... Cut? Yeah. What's our modifier? <laughs> None. Okay. Straight roll. Seven. Sixteen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Natural twenty. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. We'll have a, a podcast with all five of us uh, relatively soon, or maybe even before this. And, uh, yeah, just sit tight. We're going to do some one-shots and... Other things after a little tiny break, play some different characters, and then uh, maybe give Justin a break from DMing. Yeah, and we'll <laughs> we'll see where we end up. Yep. So thank you guys more than anything for following along with us on this journey, and uh, bye, bye, see ya, bye, bye. bye.